Hey everybody, I am here with a short video today on some design tips as a non-designer. So I do a lot of presenting and now that we're online, this is some tips that I think about or some things that I think about when I'm designing some kind of presentation or slideshow. Uh, I'm presenting from Google Slides today. I'm also presenting from my iPad so I can kind of model what I would do working from an iPad full time uh, if I were a student. So let's go ahead and get started. The first thing you need to think about in your presentation is visuals. How are they communicating your idea? Metaphor is something to think about as well with your visuals. How is it going to communicate the idea without putting the word itself on the screen? So let's take a look. Here we've got a slide. We'll talk about the layout elements a little bit later, but John Muir is a historical figure and he was a naturalist. So I found a picture that had a lot of white space. I could get the, the text in there. And I'm communicating the fact that he is an outdoorsy kind of guy. Now it's a great picture. Uh, you can use Unsplash or Pixabay. There's a lot of good stock photo uh, websites that you can use to find your photos, uh, but find one that communicates something about your topic and think through metaphor, don't go for those literal translations. Now, if my presentation was on computers, this might be the slide that you would see. So it's very blocky. I know what a computer is. You don't need to show me a picture of a computer. So think through how you can communicate an idea using metaphor and using images to do that. Another thing you need to be careful of is that finding images that are copywritten, you can't just throw them into your presentation. So here's a, a company logo that I did have permission to use, but for my presentation, I decided to take the logo and essentially trace it using sketches on my iPad. So I drew it. It's the likeness of the logo, but it's not their exact copywritten version. My version on the right is my work, even though it's modeled on something else. So I can use that copy on the right without permission from anybody because it's my own file. So be thinking about what you're using. If you don't know the copyright, either stylize it a little bit, make your own render rendition, rendition, rendition of it, and and then you can use it in your presentation. Otherwise, you're gonna to have to get permission or if you search for press kit, if you need a company logo, a lot of times those are free to use. You just need to find the right version of it on their website. Layout, you saw layout a minute ago with my first slide, but let's look a little bit more specifically at layout now. On our slides, if we're using large images, that's totally fine. So we've got a picture of the background here, but as soon as I throw some text on here, it's really hard to see. My text is black. That's the default to most of these programs. So you need to be thinking through what is my text going to look like? So step number one is to increase the contrast. So let's turn that text white. Now it's okay, but it's still kind of white in the highlights. It's hard to see. So what I like to do is add a wash and a wash is a, a semi-transparent background that just increases contrast a little bit more. And you can do this in two ways. Here's a full screen wash where I just took a, a square in my slideshow, made it the entire slide and then put a semi-transparent white background, change the opacity a little bit and it makes it look nice. Other things that people do is add just a wash behind your text. For me personally, I, I prefer this kind where it's all evenly across uh, the screen there. But again, the, the whole point is that you're increasing contrast with what you're doing. You're not sacrificing readability on your screen by using these large images. So be thinking about that when you're doing layout. Some other things you could use is texture. Now it might be a little bit hard to see, but instead of just a gray background, I've got a little bit of a geometric pattern on here. And again, if you do a Google search for free texture backgrounds, you can find all kinds of stuff. Some other things you can do is use color. So I made a slide here and I'll show you the slide in a minute, but this is just bold rectangles that I filled with different colors. You can find different color palette generators online where you put in a color and it gives you different variations of palettes that you can use to keep things consistent. So let me jump out of my presentation real quick. So again, this slide is just a bunch of rectangles layered on top of each other to create a little bit of that palette background or that bold background for that particular slide. So there's a lot of things you can do without getting too complex that give you a nice visual appeal uh, for your slides. Now, Presenter notes, this is another tool. This is more when you're ready to present. Presenter notes are your superpower. They're your note cards that hide on the slide so that you can see them, but your audience cannot. So instead of having a piece of paper that you're constantly looking at, or you're putting all your text on your page, don't do that. You use the presenter notes. So presenter notes, they need to be turned on. So in Google Slides here, I'm gonna hit the three dot menu, 
and I'm gonna turn on my speaker notes. And you can see down here, I've got my speaker notes. Fill them up with information. Those are your talking points. Your paper is written at this point or your outline is done at this point. So take that information and put it into your slide notes. Use bolds, use italics. You don't have to read them out loud, but they're there to draw your talking points to the slide for your audience. And again, that does two things. It helps you speak clearly and fluently because all your information is right there. And you don't have to get all that information on the slide. You can use those layout and design elements to make a really nice looking slideshow to help your audience remember what you're talking about, but they're not trying to frantically read everything on your slide. Google Slides has a really helpful tool called q and I'm going to have another video on that instead of doing it all in this one. So we're going to skip this guy for now. Using cues is kind of the other thing, and this is really good in presenter notes, putting someone's name there, especially if you're presenting with somebody else. Uh, the, the, the idea is that you have some kind of cue in your presentation so that you're not fumbling over who talks when. So presenter notes are a great way to do that. I've also seen where you have your initials in the bottom corner of a slide or a number on the corner of the slide, things that help you remember where you are and who's doing the talking. And those are it really. I'm going to stop here. There's a lot of other things that you can do. So we've talked a little bit about how to use images. We've talked layout, some of the tools that are in the presentation. Presenting remotely is difficult. So thinking through the visual of what you're doing is going to be more important than the text of what you're doing. It's easy to put text on slides. It's harder to come up with slides that are more appealing to look at so that the, your audience is engaging with you as you talk. So if you have questions, you can leave a comment below. You can also email your teacher and they can get a hold of me. I hope this is helpful. Don't forget to check out the other video on some of the engagement stuff as you're presenting.